if you could establish two playthroughs with two very specific premises, extremely specific conversations. So at a, at a level of complexity of, you know, a player sequenced actions and events that would be really hard to manage from a clean programming way. Hi, I'm Demon Dev. And today I wanted to get into some more speculative theory designs coming with the Electra system and kind of beyond that. So I've talked a lot about the conversation system and how there's branching, that's kind of the regular macro branching and depth branching. But how do you organize um, branching in a way that allows you to write really specific conversations? This is a big issue uh, in any game with dialogue choice whatsoever. It's actually really common, and if you listen to a bunch of GDC talks about branching dialogue systems, it's really common for programmers to create very elaborate systems for the writers to use, ideally, and uh, and to aid them in creating the very complex to manage, you know, kind of multi-dimensional stories that they're uh, trying to do. The problem is, Sometimes these tools are more from the perspective of the programmer, or it's just, you know, difficult to make these tools for sure. But for one reason or another, a lot of times writers um, that may or may not have experience uh, with these sorts of systems end up not being able to force themselves to use the tools and uh, default to something like spreadsheets or a, rel a relatively simple kind of uh, symbol structure to have you know, a regular text document or HTML be converted into the game system. And I think that's uh, really sad. I mean, it's certainly sad for the programmers that, that spent really hard uh, hours in design into, you know, building crazy node systems or, uh, I don't know, any, any sorts of, you know, intermediary tools and stuff. There's a lot that goes into making, uh, you know, interactive stories where that can go many different ways. So anyways, uh, I'm trying to, to do my own approach. This is more of a speculative, uh, vlog where I certainly do not have all the features in place, just some of the theories and, and hopefully it'll be fun to watch me kind of put this all together and you can, uh, you know, weigh in with feedback if you have any, or uh, just kind of see how the journey goes. So anyways, I am making my own sort of a node system. So I've got the, you know, the regular system or the, the electric system so far, which is this, um, you know, side by side, actually, let me scoop my windows a little bit. This side by side system, uh, where you are, um, you're building the dialogue and it's popping over here. One of the earliest designed principles with Electra is that it should be really easy for writers to get into. And one of my end goals is that uh, people who play the game, who are interested in writing or just kind of playing around modding, can jump into it super easily. So I think I have accomplished that. When you're ready to write a conversation, uh, you can just write the different characters. You select the character you write, select the other character, write, and then you could even collaborate with somebody or you can jump into the other levels to assign the variables, which, you know, there's a lot of buttons that pop up, but I think it's actually pretty manageable. You can pretty much just worry about this slider and these two sliders and, um, and make a great conversation within the Electra system. But moving beyond that, okay, how do you select which conversation you're going to write? Well, in the past, I had built sort of a system to kind of build a list of the chapters and scenes. Of course, with a um, branching dialogue and, and at the same time branching narrative, you know, different conversations, different choices of who to spend time with and how those conversations go in significantly different ways. With all those different kind of dimensions of possible, you know, game stories or, you know, just experiences happening, fights or friendships, a kind of linear list style is only so helpful. It might be helpful in setting up an outline for the types of, you know, chapters or, you know, the groups of, you know, scenes that could happen, but it's not super useful other than that. But I do really like how straightforward it is. So I want to keep the straightforwardness. So one of the things that I'm working on now is something that I'm calling a playthrough editor. And the purpose of the playthrough editor is not to make a crazy branching node tree, but actually to make a, a singular node tree. So you might have something like wake up and, you know, that would be the first note. And then, you know, maybe, um, talk to 
um, Eve. Uh, oh, I did wake up twice. And just reset this for now. So you can start with wake up and then you can go talk to Eve and then you could go, oops, <laughs> let's see here. You could go, um, maybe I should put the next button over here actually, maybe it makes more sense. Uh, and you could do, um, go to Subway. This might be the beginning of the story. And so what have I done here? Well, all I'm doing is I'm allowing the user to type in a string, which will automatically be respected and simply, simply displayed in the system. So all I'm saying is here's a sequence of events that the player can go through a specific playthrough, haha, <laughs> playthrough editor. So once you get a specific playthrough, you know, maybe this is a argument with Poppy. Once you get a specific playthrough, the goal here is not about what's supported in the system. And you can make anything supported in the game system, really, if you've outlined it like this. It's really about giving the writer a tool to create a specific playthrough premise and then being able to write to that playthrough premise as if it's a, you know, a keyframe uh, that they have complete control over. So um, maybe next is interrupted by friends and and that's the nice thing about typing in a string here is these could be any types of um events you know maybe one day you would you know grab talk and turn that into like a conversation or other things like that but i want to keep it as, as open as possible so that a writer can just focus on kind of beats that happen usually they would be player actions like talking initiating a conversation or going somewhere or some sort of an activity maybe um you know do uh biking oops let me put that in there biking to school and these just kind of get all added in down the line and um so what happens here is you have these kind of quick buttons to jump to the different conversations that could happen here so you could jump you could hit this and what it will do is it will select the very specific conversation so you know the example here would be you know talking to arguing with pop in the subway if i hit right it'll pop up the corresponding conversation and i can write that here but the hope is not just okay so this is maybe a more um open-ended organization structure than something like this which is more generated from elsewhere and, and less editable maybe uh what i'm really trying to go for is actually set up a comparison node tree. So again, I'm not super interested in visualizing the infinite branching possibilities. I am interested in making some tools so you can compare and contrast. This is just kind of my quick menu for, okay, so if I want to change what happens here, maybe I can jump into this and there'll be a bunch of different options there. Uh, don't worry about that for now though. But what I'm really interested in is setting up multiple playthroughs simultaneously. Aha. So what would be the point of that? Well, the point of that is then you could make very specific comparisons. So imagine, and this is, again, this is speculative. This is a feature that I'm working on, but is certainly not there yet. Oh, actually, I really love free aspect here. Oh, yeah, that's great. So what happens if you can visualize two versions of the conversation of a similar, con maybe the exact same conversation, the only difference is in one of the conversations you are um, making different choices. Then the writer really has the power to compare across dimensions. And, you know, again, you would probably have a um, another inspector tab as well. You know, maybe doing some sort of corresponding thing here would be good. Yeah, I could, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> UI design uh, questions. If you guys have any ideas on that, I would... I'd love to take your idea. No, I mean, I'd love to collaborate and, you know, see if you want to uh, to work on anything else. Definitely feel free to join the server and work on your own projects uh, in the link below. But the idea here is if you could establish two playthroughs with two very specific premises, then you could, oh, I guess my, let me turn off my, uh, then I think you would be able to write 
extremely specific conversation. So at a, at a level of complexity of, you know, a player sequenced actions and events that would be really hard to manage from a clean programming way. Uh, let's see if I can scoot this in. By no means do I know what the, <laughs> maybe I can, maybe I should drop the aspect ratio not that much. Yeah. So somewhere along the lines here, you can create, um, you know, these side by side conversations and work on, you know, it could be the same conversation with different player options or different AI options. You can kind of force set it and then compare and contrast. I think one of the difficult things is when you actually have the, um, the conversation options where you need to tab back and forth, it's very hard, at least for me as a writer trying to use the system, it's very hard to focus. But if I could see, you know, two different playthroughs, you know, described up here and, you know, ideally kind of like doing some sort of clean little interaction with the UI like this, you know, this one's going like that and, oops. It's <laughs> this, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. You have two different premises going on right here. Still a lot to add. But um, if you could work on two versions of the story at the same time and compare and contrast them, I think that will explode the possibilities for what uh, kind of complexity and, and just manageable complexity. Like, okay, here's this exact same conversation and two different premises. Anyways... I uh, hope that was interesting. You'll see a lot more of this playthrough editor in the future, but I'm excited about its potential, excited about uh, trying out. Definitely download Electra if you haven't already and you're interested in these sorts of things. It's free for Unity, and I think uh, you'll have a good time. All right, have a good one.